All right, welcome on back. The time of year has arrived where we are going to milk Total Archery Challenge for as many views as we can get because we are getting close-ish to a thousand subs. And honestly, we're not that close to the amount of watch hours we need to be monetized. So please watch this video and then just let all of our videos play in the background. Today though, what we are doing is building my arrows for Total Archery Challenge. We are going back to the one in Oklahoma and I built these arrows out last year and I'm honestly running the exact same arrows just with a different vein and wrap configuration. So we're just gonna walk you through that, a little bit of a how to fletch your arrows up and then kind of why I'm shooting the arrows I am. So the arrows that I am shooting are the Victory Archery RIP XVs, extreme velocity, micro diameter, super light. Um, I actually have been seeing a ton of people starting to use these arrows for tack. I just wanna say, for the first time in my life, I'm not just following, following the trend. I actually did like come up with this idea completely on my own. I went on the website, found them. I was like, wow, those are light. Let me use them. So we've got the Victory Archery RIP XV 350 spine. Uh, just use the normal inserts that come with them. All but two of these actually have inserts, so I only have to put an insert in a couple of them. And then we are going to use some wraps from One Stringer. Uh, they make really cool stuff. They make the limb decals that I have on my bow. They make wraps that you can customize. So like this year, I got these really cool wraps that are green with topo lines and our logo on them, which is dope. So I love those guys. They're actually like local to us. They're like 10 minutes away, which is really cool. Uh, for the veins, I am going full hype train. We're gonna try the tack veins. Now, I'm going to be fully transparent. This is the second time we're shooting this video. I tried to put these tack veins on the first time. I have now learned if you are going to use these veins, use their stuff. Do not think that you can just use any random glue you have lying around. That's not just me. Like I have talked to multiple people and all of them have said tack veins are awesome, but if you're going to use tack veins, you have to use their stuff, primer pen, their glue, all of that. Apparently with like how stiff the veins are, their glue works a little bit different or something. I'm not 100% sure, but I just know everyone I talked to said, yep, tack veins are great, but if you're gonna use them, use their adhesion kit. So we have all of the necessary tools now, so we can actually do this the proper way. Um, so step one, what I'm gonna start with is we're just gonna get the insert in uh, one of these last arrows that I have. All I'm gonna do is just walk you through one arrow. I'm not gonna go through all 12 of them. Um, we're just gonna build this entire arrow out and then that'll be it. We'll do a little bit of shooting at the end. So this is the stock insert that these come with. It's just called like the, uh, I think it's like the RIP shock insert. It's 21 grains, 21 grains. It's like one of those little half outsert type deals. It's pretty cool. Um, now I know I just went on a rant about how you need to use the correct stuff, but to glue these in, I do just have some AAE stuff laying around that I'm gonna use, because that's not as big of a deal. But I guess if you're ever doing this, you just drop a little bit of glue on there, make sure you've kind of got all sides covered. And you take your arrow and you wanna push and spin is something that I always like to do. And then as soon as you get that done, grab your paper towel and then just kind of spin it, clean up all that excess stuff. And then you have yourself an insert in the arrow. So there's step one complete. Now we're gonna move on to applying these wraps. So um, like I talked about, One Stringer is the name of the guys that we use. They do a few cool things. Number one, they allow you to customize your wraps, which I just think that's fun, because to me, that's one of the main reasons. There's two reasons I use wraps. 
A, they look cool, and B, when it's time to refletch your arrows, it is so much easier to scrape all that off and just have a clean slate to work with. Um, but something that they do is the customizing and they have a chart on their website to where whatever arrow you're using, they tell you the exact width of wrap that you need. That way there's zero overlap. So I know a lot of manufacturers, they'll do like to where there's, it's almost like it's skived on the end. So the overlap isn't as aggressive, but with what they do, there's zero overlap, which I just think is really cool. So when you are putting wraps on, I would say it's still important to clean the end of your arrow for that. Um, we just use like alcohol wipes or like AAE makes the like wipes that you wipe the end of the arrow down with. Um, let that air dry. And then for rolling wraps on, um, you're gonna find that they sell like wrap pads. It's essentially a mouse pad or a gun cleaning pad. It's the same thing, just a nice smooth flat surface that you can roll these wraps on with. There's two things you're gonna wanna pay attention to. The first is lining up with the end of your arrow. That way you don't have a bunch of it hanging down on your knock or your way down here. And then if your arrows have a spinal line mark, like these do, ideally, if you can, you'd like to line each and every one of your arrows up with the spinal line, because consistency is just always a good thing with arrows. I mean, you're ideally, you're trying to build these to be as accurate as you can get them. So if you can repeat as many things as you can, that's gonna be your best bet for accuracy. So we just lay these down. Find yourself a good spot on the mat. Have enough room. Find your spine line. And basically what I do is I just kind of lay the arrow to where that spine line is facing straight up into the sky. And then I line it up at the end of my arrow. And I just push directly into the arrow or the wrap until it starts moving. And that's how I know I've made contact with the wrap and then I push down and roll at the same time. Roll it over, make sure there's no air bubbles, and then I kind of just give it one of those, look it over, perfect. So now our wrap is on, our insert is in. The last thing we're gonna need to do is put some fletching on there. So we are gonna bring out the bits and burger. We have one of the uh, like Arizona Easy Fletch, but the helical on that is pretty aggressive and I just personally don't want that. I think the Easy Fletch is awesome. It saves a lot of time, but I don't know. I just didn't really feel like having that much of a helical on my arrows. Uh, but if you have never used the Bitsen Burger, there's a few things you'll want to make sure you do. Uh, number one, your knock is gonna seat down on a little notch thing in here. Make sure it's pressed down all the way on there. You will hear clicks for each one that you're doing. You can do a three fletch, a four fletch, or like a modified four fletch thing on here. I think that's for like traditional archery, not really sure. Anywho, make sure you're in one of the clicks, make sure you're pushed all the way in, and then, like we said, line your knock up with your spinal line and your wrap. That way, again, you just have as much consistency as you can have. So like right there, I know that my fletching is gonna be right there. So I'm trying to line my spinal line and my, the like crease of my wrap. I'm trying to line all of that up on this one fletching. You can just do that by spinning the arrow on the knock in there. So we've got our arrow all the way pressed down in. We've got our spinal line lined up. We are going to take one of our fletching, and I've already done this, but I'll kind of explain what we do. On your clamp, you're gonna have a bunch of these little hash marks. Just pick one of them. I use the very last one, and that's the way you know your all of your veins are the same distance from the end of your arrow. Get that all 
all the way in there and then it's just a magnet you clamp it on and what you're what you want to do before you ever put any glue on there is these little things on the back this is your adjustment for how this whole thing sits you can move it up down you can twist it like that make sure especially with these tack veins because they're so stiff make sure you're getting good contact you're not having like sometimes what can happen is if everything is off you'll be pushing down and the end of the clamp will be pushing into your arrow so you're not getting a good seal on like the front of your vein so adjust these make sure you're actually don't do that make sure you're actually going to be pushing the vein onto the arrow I guess that leads me into my next point. Push down in a way that you're not going to do what I just did. I know I just did it, but obviously don't do that. So we have everything set up. We've got our wrap on the arrow. We have our bits completely dialed to where we need it. Now, this is where going back to, like I said in the beginning of the video, apparently, and this is not me like complaining about tack veins, you really, really need to use their stuff. Um, I mean, I can tell you, I've fletched a few arrows now, and that was the first time that I've had veins just falling off of the arrow as I was shooting. So we're gonna try to not have that happen again. Um, they have their glue, which like I mentioned, apparently it's a little bit of a different consistency than most other glues and then they have their primer pen um, i'm not sure if there's anything super special about their primer pen that's a pretty standard issue thing a lot of companies have primer pens but i think from what it sounds like their glue is where it really makes a difference but we are going to use this primer pen um, all you do with that shake it up you'll be able to hear it i don't know if the mic's picking that up it's I'm not, I'm not sure what type of liquid is in there, honestly, but find you something like a paper towel. Um, and what you're gonna wanna do is you kind of give this like an initial push because like that, a bunch of liquid just came flying out. So now that we've done that, this is like good to go. You wanna do that before you go to a vein because if you don't, you're gonna have that explosion happen on the vein. So. Now that we're good to go there, we just kind of go back and forth on that. There's something in there, that's for sure. But let that air dry. While we're letting that air dry, set that right there. We get this out. Um, another kind of new thing that I've learned recently is some guys will cover the entire vein in glue some people say you shouldn't do that they say you should leave just a little bit of space at the front and the end of the vein because when you're pressing down and it all spreads out it fills that in that makes sense to me so i'm going to attempt to do that if i can get the glue to come on out of this thing it might yeah, it definitely does. Thank you, Dylan. You're welcome. Just fill that in. You want to make sure you don't see any like air bubbles in your glue. Just kind of spread it out. You really don't need that much. Like I can tell you, me personally, in the beginning of my arrow fletching journey, I was putting way too much glue on there. So I'm gonna push that down. I know they say only hold it for five seconds, but it just, I feel like it's one of those, if you hold it for longer, it can't hurt. And like I mentioned, I did already botch the first round of this. So I'm wanting to really make sure I'm getting a good seal on these. So we push down and then another new little thing I like to do is I keep a Q-tip and I just kind of run it along the edge of that one and open this up, click it over, run the Q-tip 
on the other side. See if there's anything. Now I can immediately tell you that one seems like it's sticking better. Cause last time what was happening is like, they just weren't sticking. And I know I sound like a broken record here. I think from what I've read and listened to their glue, I want to say it's, it's a little bit thicker. It's not as watery as other people's glues. So with how stiff that vein is, it gives it a little more, it just sticks better. I, I don't know, that might make sense. It might not make sense what I'm trying to say, but that immediately seems to be sticking better. So got the first one on, like I said, click it over, always kind of press down on the arrow, make sure you're in there, make sure that's all the way in one of the grooves. And then I'm just doing a three fletch. I've done four fletch in the past, I think. I think it's just not really necessary, honestly, especially for these light of arrows. I'm gonna have 100 grain field tips at the front. They're not like, um, there's, there's just not really a need for it. Everything looks better. I think last time, I, th I think last time I was just rushing, honestly. I didn't, didn't have all the tools necessary. I was kind of trying to go fast. Didn't have the bits completely dialed like I should have. And that is a lesson in life, um, especially with fletching arrows, but just with anything. Don't try to go fast, because when you try to go fast, you usually mess up, so. Let me, let me make the mistakes that way you don't have to. Oh yeah, that's looking mucho better. All right, we got one left on this. Um, I guess another little fun tidbit of information while we're fletching this up, don't worry, this, this, we're almost done. We are almost done, I promise. Um, but we could talk about helical, so if you're not a caveman like Dylan and shooting a drop away instead of, like I said, Dylan, who is a caveman and still shoots a whisker biscuit, um, it can give you a little bit of added benefit to shoot some helical. Now, the problem is you need to make sure you're shooting your helical in the right direction. Now, the way you find that out is you take an arrow with nothing on it knock it up and draw like a silver Sharpie on the top of your arrow and then shoot a target that's like a foot away. That way the arrow can't completely rotate. And then what you do is you go to that arrow and whichever way it turned, that's the direction the bow is naturally spinning your arrow. It, it, the arrow is going to naturally spin out of your bow one way. Most bows, they spin the same way, honestly. There's a few bow manufacturers that the way they twist their strings and all that it's different but for the most part it's the same follow that so it's honestly it's not the end of the world if you don't especially if you're like me and dylan and you're just kind of average archers it really isn't going to kill you but it's like i keep saying if any any advantage you can give yourself to be a little bit more accurate you might as well it's one of those things I think if you if you pretend like you're some high level archer that needs a highly dialed setup well then it can only help you'll at least look cool when you're missing the target from 50 yards every time very nice squeegee squeegee Get that off. and then the very very last thing that I'm gonna do, that a lot of guys do, is they just call it tipping. So the points of which most veins are going to fail is the ends, so the front and the back. So what you can do is take your glue and just drop little tiny drops right on the back and the front of 
all of your fletchings. And that's just kind of your last ditch effort of really making sure that those aren't going anywhere. And I can tell you, I feel much more confident this go around with these fletchings than I do the first time. But I'm still gonna do this. So we've got that. I'm almost seeing shorter? Or did I get a shorter one? Oh, I did. I got the 2.25 instead of, oh, whoops. I better make sure I don't accidentally mix any of those up. Don't, mix don't accidentally mix a 2.75 with a 2.25. I kind of like that better though, honestly. But anywho, that looks much better. All right, so I had to go get the field point, but we've got the field point. Um, looks like I need to go get some different field points because those don't really line up with the lip of that outsert very well. So we'll go find some more of those, but you get the idea. Um, Victory, RIP, XVs, 350 spine with the 21 grain insert, outsert thing, 100 grain field point, one string of wraps, 2.25 inch uh, tack driver veins, and I believe they come stock with a AAE knock. It's like a 0 0.204. Um, we're actually gonna go out and shoot them a little bit at least side in maybe make my sight tape but that's that's the whole point of why i use these arrows for tech is they're just so dang light that i can have a sight tape that goes to whatever distance i want i mean let's be honest folks i'm not accurate past 50 but i can at least have the mental assurance of knowing that i have a 130 yard pin don't need it but anywho um yeah, we'll go out and shoot it a little bit, but I'm very happy with that so far. All right, so it's actually been a few days since I fletched these up. Um, it was super cold and windy, so I didn't really feel like going out to shoot. But unfortunately, three days later, and it's still really cold. My hands are ice right now, so regardless that's kind of video is already playing along at this point but uh, I did weigh the arrows they ended up being 318 grains which is just insane um, I just finished up making my sight tape and I have vein clearance all the way out to 150 yards which is just stupid and unnecessary but like I keep saying that's the whole point of these arrows is just unnecessary basically so I would say we have achieved that goal um, now the task is just getting the reps in before tack that way we don't look like a complete idiot out there gotta make sure I can at least outshoot Dylan but anyways uh yeah that's that's the arrow build. Um, let me set this bow down real quick. But yeah, that's that's them. They are super light. They're green, which makes them awesome. And uh, yeah, if, if you want to copy that setup for Total Archer Challenge, I think it is definitely a really good setup just for, like I said, getting, getting the most unnecessary type sight tape you could imagine. This is the arrow to do it with. Um, can't really speak to the durability of them because all I use them for is target. So that's the video. That's the arrow. Thanks for watching that one. Watch some of our other videos and we'll see you in the next one.